Hello everyone, I'm the Norse DM, and for my first video I really wanted to go over my favorite monster in D&D. The Displacer Beast. Challenge rating of 3, it's not going to be one of the toughest things you come across in a campaign by any means. But it's got some nasty tricks up its sleeve. On top of its multi-attack with these really nasty looking tentacles up here, um, it's got a claw attack, it can bite you, but it's got this is ability called avoidance, which basically says that if they have to roll to take half damage, if they succeed on the roll, they take no damage at all, which the look on the player's face when they realize their fourth level spell did no damage is just so funny. Um, and then it's got another ability called displacement, which it makes an illusion of itself, it makes it harder to hit. And, I mean, who could say no to more of these murder kittens on the battlefield? They are some of the most adorable looking things in the entire monster manual. And I honestly can't get enough of seeing them on the battlefield. They're incredibly unintelligent. They've got an intelligence stat of 6. They've got a strength stat of 18. Which means if you've got a good animal handling skill, you could potentially tame one and it'd be kind of a pack mule for you seen it happen before. I hate to see it happen, but it means the Displacer Beast is in the game a little bit longer because my players aren't killing it. But that's my favorite monster. If you want me to go over any other monsters, you just let me know which ones and I'll get to them. Well, hello there, adventurers. Today we're going to talk about a special monster that I like to call Spider Mommy. I'm talking, of course, about Driders. Now these drow elves turned spider abominations have a challenge rating of 6, so they're going to be difficult, so you keep your wits about you. They've got a health of 123, so not a lot. You can handle it. However, it's got multi-attack. They've got these long swords. They have long bows for range. They can poison you. Or, if your DM's especially nasty like I am, we have the variant of Drider Spellcaster, where they've got some fairly nasty spells. However, I do believe in you, adventurers. You can handle this abomination. Now, I call it Spider Mommy because while it is nightmare fuel, I like to describe them as beautiful women until their lower half clears the tree line. They're always surrounded by regular giant spiders, which doesn't sound like a massive threat because they're not in small numbers. So you just need to remember if you see a drider, there are spiders with them. Whether you see them, hear them or not, they're there. But like I said, I believe in you adventurers. You can handle this monstrosity. Thank you for the comment, Marinated Gamer. Now, at first, I agreed with you about her being the real spider mommy. However, I thought about it, and I decided to dive down the rabbit hole that is lore dumps, right? Turns out, Shieldred isn't even really a spider, and therefore can't be spider mommy. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is Shieldred. Uh, she was a badass card, badass leader of Phyrexia in Magic the Gathering, and the Mirrodin set is when she first came through. Um, I agree, she kind of looks like a spider, except her lower half has this big-ass mouth, which is what really got me thinking at first. Turns out, uh, she can split her body in the center right here, and her upper half slithers around, kind of like snakish, and then her bottom half is described as a spider-like fiend. So while she is still mommy, she is not spider mommy. She is a fiend mommy, predator mommy, whatever you want to call her. Just remember, she absolutely can't get it because with her poison effects, I don't doubt for a second anything you put near her will melt off and then be reborn. I wouldn't suggest it, but she's still mommy. Welcome back, adventurers. We're talking about another monster today. But this time, we're talking about something so stupidly weak that you're going to ask me why bother. It's the Crawling Claw. Now, I like this monster. Because it's great for new players to get the hang of combat. Uh, if you're a new DM and you don't know how well you're personally going to run an encounter as the DM, Crawling Claw is a great thing to throw at your level 1 party. Because they're, they've got 2 health. They've got, 
They've got two health. Armor class 12. Nobody's missing. I promise. And if they are, their dice are cursed. Tell the dice goblins to get new dice. If you're a new player, it's got two health. Don't freak out. I personally only use them for plot devices, for, for flavor. You know, walking through a forest that they've been warned ahead of time might be haunted. They're clearing out a haunted mansion as a side quest. You know, or just anything in general. You know, the crawling claw is an amazing thing to throw at people. If you don't want to worry about them, you know, colossally messing up at level one. Super easy to kill, super easy to run. I recommend it for any new DM or any veteran DM to throw at a new player. Crawling Claw, ladies and gentlemen. Round of applause. Because that punk ass can't clap for himself. Welcome back, adventurers. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most popular monsters in all of Dungeons & Dragons. The Beholder. Now, this thing's got a challenge rating of 13, so you're not going to see it a whole lot. And when you do, it's going to be later on in a campaign, when you're a little bit higher level. Now, this giant central eye right here, it's got this thing called the Anti-Magic Cone. Which makes it so that if you're a caster and you're standing in front of it, you're not going to be able to use magic. Which can make this thing a real nightmare for most parties, especially when it's staring at your healer. And it's got all of these different eye stalks with different eyes, making it so that it has a total of 10 different eye ray abilities. Each does its own separate thing, which can make things a little bit more complicated. And then it's got a legendary action that lets it use an eye ray at the end of somebody else's turn. Now, luckily for you, it can only do this a total of three times uh, within a day. And it can't use them all at once, which means that at the end of your turn, it can't use all three right then to try and kill you. It can only use one, which makes it a little bit more manageable. But ultimately, what you're going to want to do is make sure that your frontline fighters are standing right in front of it so it can't move around and look at your casters. Meanwhile, your casters are simultaneously using their dash ability or just hightailing it, making sure they stay behind it every turn. Stay out of range of that of this big old central eye right here, and you should be fine. I believe in you, adventurers. You can do it. Welcome back, adventurers. Do your DMs like to send you through you know, old battlefields or even fresh battlefields? If so, you're going to want to be on the lookout for one of these monstrosities. This is a cadaver collector. With challenge rating of 15, it's not something that you want to find while you're looting a battlefield. The reason I say that is because... They're usually summoned by necromancers to go and collect the bodies of the dead so that they can be made into an army of the undead. So if you're ever finding yourself in a fresh battlefield and you hear the creaking of metal and you can smell death just getting closer to you, maybe give a perception check to see if you can find one of these things lurking about. They're very large, so you will be able to see them. But just keep in mind... It has magic resistance, all of its attacks are made with magical weapons, and it has spell reflection, which means that if they pass your spell save, they get to redirect that spell at any target they want within 120 feet of themselves, which is going to be you and your party. So just keep those things in mind, maybe try and stay away from magic if you can, hit it hard with physical weapons, you guys can down this no problem. I do have faith in you. Good luck, adventurers. Welcome back, adventurers. Today, we're gonna go ahead and continue the horror-themed monsters because Halloween, right? So today we're gonna talk about the Bodak. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Bodak is the undead remains of pretty much anyone or anything that worshiped Orcus, or the Prince of Undeath, for those of you who don't know. So next time your DM decides to drop some hints about a uh, about Orcus, Prince of Undeath, someone with, you know, big horns and a bull-looking skull, you know, anything around those general statistics, be ready for a Bodak. Now, these things aren't overly strong. They've got a challenge rating of 6, so you're not looking at anything overwhelming. It's got about 58 health, but it does have this thing called the Aura of Annihilation. What that does is it makes so that anyone who ends their turn within 30 feet of the Bodak is going to take 5 necrotic damage. 
Now that doesn't sound like a lot, especially since it's a challenge rating six monster, but five really builds up very fast. So you need to be very careful of that. Keep an eye on your health when you're fighting this thing. And honestly, it's just scary looking. You can handle it. I believe in you. Welcome back, adventurers. Today we're going to talk about another unholy monstrosity that was loosed upon the plains by Orcus himself. We're going to talk about the Devourer. Now, this thing got its name by devouring humanoid creatures while wandering the plains of existence. All of the plains, because Orcus hates everyone. Now, this ugly thing doesn't look overly powerful. It's got these, you know, lanky, skinny arms, so no muscle mass on the legs. It's dumb looking face, right? But don't let its looks fool you. It's got a challenge rating of 13, and boy howdy has it earned it. It's only got 178 health, however it's got this skill called Soul Red, and what that does is it makes a vortex of necrotic energy around it within 20 feet with it at its center, and anything within that 20 foot radius has to make a DC 18 say, constitution saving throw, and if you fail, you're going to take 44 necrotic damage, um, or 4d10 plus a modifier. Most DMs just go with the 44 when it's something like that, some don't, it's a lot of damage. Now, luckily for you, this skill does have recharge 6, so it can't use it for another 6 turns. However, it's got another grotesque skill called Imprisoned Soul. What that does is it lets it pick up a, a, humanoid, a humanoid body that's within 30 feet of itself. It's got to be at zero hit points, but not dead. And put it in its ribcage, like so. If that happens, said creature has disadvantage on all death saving throws. And should it die, it heals the Devourer for 25 health. Making it essentially a delayed health potion. Now, this thing is super difficult, which means that if it's thrown at you, there's a good chance that your DM's mad at you for some reason. But, don't get discouraged. I promise you, you guys can handle this. I believe in you. Welcome back, adventurers. Do you find yourself in an underground cavern full of lakes and ruins? Well, then you might run into one of these monstrosities real soon here. Now, this is called an Abolith. With a challenge rating of 10 and 135 health, they're nothing to scoff at. Now while I am fully convinced you all can definitely handle this thing, there are a couple things to be worried about. It has multi-attacks, it's gonna hit you a couple times, but it's also got an ability called Enslave. And what this is, it makes any creature within 30 feet make a wisdom saving throw. And if you fail, you become charmed by it for three days and you can make another attempt every day or you'll be free of it once you get more than a mile away. Now that doesn't sound overly bad to begin with, but then it's got a legendary ability that it's called Psychic Drain. And what it does is any enslaved creature will take three D6 psychic damage. And however much damage that charmed creature takes, the Abolith will then heal. So it can also heal itself and that's never fun. But as long as you keep your wits about you, keep your dice ready, Make sure you're beating that wisdom save on the enslave. You'll be all right. You can handle this. I believe in you. Welcome back, adventurers. Today we're going to talk about another kind of horror monster because we're still in October. Now, while this particular monster may not look the most terrifying, don't let that fool you. The most terrifying thing about the mimic is that it can be anything. It could be a door. It could be a chest. A barrel, you see a nice chair you want to sit on, hey, it can be anything, which means you never know when you're going to run into this thing, and that's what makes it so absolutely terrifying. Now, the great thing about this is it's only got a challenge rating of 2, and it's only got 58 hit points. So, it's definitely something that you can handle, just know that if you don't have the alert feat, you're going to be surprised, so it's going to get a chance to attack you first most of the time but that's fine you can definitely handle it these things usually are going to be something that you fight one on one or four or five on one it's gonna fight you by itself is what i'm getting at here and because of that i know you can handle it i believe in you <laughs> 